If you've ever been hiking, chances are you've come across some wild sights and sounds, but nothing compares to the story you're about to hear. When two hikers set out to make the 2,000 mile journey along the Appalachian Trail, they expected natural beauty and adventure. They didn't anticipate the evil lurking in the woods. Let's recap. Welcome to True Crime Recaps. I'm Chris. Every week, Amy and I are here recapping your favorite true crimes in about 15 minutes or less. We cover the twists and turns of a case so you can get a quick story fix or be inspired to do a deeper dive when you've got the time. We call it All the Crime in Half the Time. If that sounds good to you, it would really mean a lot to us if you took a second to give this a like and share our channel with a friend. It really helps us grow. Thanks again for spending some time with us today. And now, now, on with the story. Every year, millions of vacationers descend on the Appalachian Trail, a legendary 2,200-mile footpath stretching from Georgia to Maine. For nature lovers looking for untouched wilderness and uncharted territories, this is the promised land. In the summer and early fall of 1990, a love story was unfolding on the trail. Jeffrey Hood and Molly LaRue were an adventurous couple with an insatiable thirst for exploration. On June 4, 1990, they set out on a six-month journey that would change the course of their lives forever. They were what's known as through hikers. Those are the hardy souls who plan to cover all 2,000 plus miles of the trail. Jeff and Molly were southbounder through hikers, meaning they started in Maine and headed south. It takes five to seven months to walk the whole trail, depending on how fast you're going, and Jeff and Molly were taking their time. At 26 and 25 years old, the two of them were between jobs and trying to decide what the next phase of their life should look like. They met working at a church-sponsored wilderness program for at-risk kids in Kansas. Molly was originally from Ohio, Jeff from Tennessee. They fit together like peanut butter and jelly. They were both recent college grads. Jeff earned a teaching degree. Molly studied art, but they both wanted to spend their lives helping troubled kids. Molly used to work as an instructor with Outward Bound, and she was trained as an emergency medical technician. Jeff was an avid rock climber and once taught Boy Scouts how to climb. They were both experienced long-time hikers who dreamed of conquering all 2,000 plus miles of the Appalachian Trail. When they found themselves between jobs in May 1990, they decided to go for it before enrolling in grad school. It's tradition for through hikers to take trail names, like nicknames. Jeff and Molly chose the names Clevis and Nalgene. Along the trail are hundreds of shelters where you can take refuge and meet up with other hikers, friends and strangers alike. Typically, they offer nothing more than three walls and a roof over your head, a fire pit to cook with and maybe a picnic table to eat on. Some shelters are nicer than others, but one thing they all have in common is the log book, a sort of a rustic guest book where visitors leave musings and messages for other hikers on the trail. In this tight-knit community, Molly and Jeff were favorites, even to those they hadn't met yet, because of the creative, happy notes they left in the log books along the way. On September 11th, 1990, they were almost halfway done and looking forward to meeting up with Jeff's family in West Virginia. They spent that night in a cheap hotel in Duncannon, Pennsylvania, jumping at the chance to shower and sleep on a real mattress. The next morning, they ran some errands, restocked their supplies, and got back on the trail late that afternoon, planning to stay at the nearby Thelma Marks shelter overnight. Thelma Marks was a bare-bones lean-to nestled deep in the trees. Jeff and Molly most likely made camp there around 5 p.m. on September 12th. They died there 12 hours later. 38-year-old Paul David Cruz already he had one body under his belt before he ran into Jeff and Molly. In 1986, he caught a ride home from a bar in Florida with a woman named Clemmie Jewel Arnold. She was found naked and almost decapitated near the shack he was living in. Her Oldsmobile turned up at Paul's brother's house in North Carolina. His bloody clothes and knife were in the trunk. Paul himself was nowhere to be found. He was born Paul David Horn, one of eight kids. At six, his father took off. At nine, Paul was adopted by the Cruz family. He spent his child childhood in and out of trouble. After high school, he married his longtime girlfriend and joined the Marine. Neither commitment lasted more than a year. His bad temper and mood swings got him kicked out of the military and lost him his high school sweetheart. Eventually, he married again and just as quickly divorced again after taking a knife to his new wife's throat. After Clemmy's body was found, he spent the next four years running from the cops in Florida, drifting from place to place, surviving with odd jobs under the alias Casey Horn. In September, 
1990, he caught a bus to Pennsylvania where he went to a library to look at maps of the Appalachian Trail. On September 11th, he set out, just one day before his path collided with Jeff and Molly's. Now, the Appalachian Trail isn't for the faint of heart. Hikers come prepared with special gear and supplies. Paul stuck out for the simple fact that he wasn't prepared. In his dirty jeans and combat boots, he looked like what he was, a drifter. He carried a small backpack and two red duffel bags with the Marlboro cigarette logo on them. No one could have guessed he was also carrying a gun, a nine-inch hunting knife, a quart of Jim Beam, and a cigarette pack filled with cocaine. Close to 6 p.m. on September 13th, Biff and Cindy Bowen, a.k.a. the Lone Moccasins, made it to the Thelma Mark shelter. They were hoping they'd run into Jeff and Molly there. The two couples didn't know each other, but Biff and Cindy had been reading Jeff and Molly's logbook entries, and they felt like they practically already knew each other. What they found in that shelter is forever burned in their brains. Jeff was on his back in the corner with his head on a makeshift pillow. If you didn't look closely, you might have thought he was asleep. He had been shot three times in the head. On the other side of the shelter, Molly lay face down in a pool of blood. Her hands were tied behind her back. A rope was looped around her neck. She had been sexually assaulted and stabbed over and over in the neck and back. Jeff's top-of-the-line green backpack and all their supplies were gone. One red Marlboro duffel bag was left behind. To reach the crime scene, detectives were forced to navigate three hours of rugged trail. It took another four hours to clear trees and brush off a logging road so vehicles could get through and take the bodies and evidence away. Word spread fast among the tight-knit hiking community. Molly and Jeff were dead and their killer was on the loose. Everyone was on guard and on edge. Eight days later and a hundred miles south, a hiker spotted a man on the trail with an expensive overstuffed green backpack. To an experienced trail walker, it was obvious it didn't belong to him. He didn't carry it right. He wasn't one of them. The observant hiker tipped off police. On September 21, park rangers and Harper's Ferry grabbed Paul. He was also wearing Jeff's boots and watch, and he still had the murder weapons on him. It's not exactly clear what happened in that shelter. Two of the three people that could tell us for sure are dead, and Paul never offered any details or a motive for the attack. But according to author Earl Swift, there's some evidence that Paul sat and talked to Jeff and Molly for a while. In the days after he stole their supplies, he also tried their stolen story on for size. He told anyone he came across that he had set out from Maine in early June, and he mentioned the name of another hiker Jeff and Molly had been trying to catch up to. In May 1991, he was sentenced to death. Fifteen years later, it turned into life without parole, and 16 years after that, death finally found Paul in a Pennsylvania prison at the ripe old age of 70 when he passed away from natural causes. Today, the Thelma Mark Shelter has been replaced by a new building and renamed the Cove Mountain Shelter, but the memories of what happened there aren't so easy to tear down. In the 33 years since Jeff and Molly were killed, hikers have become less trusting of strangers they meet on the trail and more aware that violence can follow you anywhere, even into the most peaceful of places. If you want to dive deeper into this story, Story, you should check out Earl Swift's article, Murder on the Appalachian Trail. It's linked in the pinned comment below. I really think you'll enjoy it. And thanks again for spending your time with us today. And that's your recap. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a story. We're here Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but don't go away. Catch up on more recaps right here, right now. Until next time, take care.